Hi there and welcome to PhD at Living. Mama told you never to mix bleach and ammonia, right? But why? What does she know that she's not telling you? Does it make something cool? Actually, it does make some pretty gnarly stuff. Not like immediate death gnarly, but still things that you don't want to be deeply inhaling with vigor. If you go on the interwebs and look for this reaction, you'll see people claiming that you'll make chlorine gas, which is basically mustard gas. Or you could get hydrazine, which will kill you immediately and also blow up your body because it's rocket fuel. And while both those products are theoretically possible, I dare say you won't immediately propel your poisoned on-fire body into space just because you mix ammonia and bleach. As always, let's take a look. Ammonia is luckily, well, just ammonia. It's a simple gas, NH3, and was named after the ancient Egyptian sect Ammonians who worshipped the god Amun and used ammonium chloride in their rituals. Dope. Incidentally, ammonia is probably in my top five least favorite chemical smells. I occasionally have to be around it at work, and those are never fun days for me. In high school, on the first day of honors chemistry, my teacher passed around a bottle of ammonium hydroxide, basically just ammonia in water. Now, with good lab practice, everyone was wafting the solution just to get a little whiff of it, but my buddy Zach decided he was going to take a hit right to the head and went <laughs> He coughed for about five minutes straight or so, and his nose was beet red for an hour, so let that be a lesson to you. Bleach, on the other hand, is almost always an aqueous solution of sodium hypochlorite, NaClO or NaOCl, doesn't matter. It's the sodium salt of hypochlorous acid, HOCl. For completeness, most bleaches have just a little splash of sodium hydroxide in there to prevent the hypochlorite from decomposing so quickly, but from this point going forward, we're just going to ignore that. The single most likely product from the reaction of ammonia and bleach is almost certainly monochloramine. Let's take a look at that. First, the hypochlorite, ClO-, protonates to become hypochlorous acid, HOCl. Hypochlorous acid is a weak acid with a pKa of 7.53. So weak, in fact, that that pKa is on the wrong side of 7 for an acid. Anyway, the hypochlorous acid does a nucleophilic substitution with the ammonia to create that monochloramine. This reaction happens best at a pH of around 8 or so, which makes sense with that 7.5 pKa of the hypochlorous acid. Let's look at the actual mechanism. Thankfully, this mechanism is easy enough that even I can do it. First, let's look at the difference in electronegativities on the oxygen and the chlorine in our hypochlorous acid. We know oxygen wants the electrons more, so the dipole will have that with a partial negative charge and the chlorine with a partial positive charge. Now let's look at the nucleophilicity of the ammonia. This electron lone pair wants to find a covalent home in a positive center, and hey, wouldn't you know it, that chlorine acts as that. So the electrons from the nitrogen come over to the chlorine, and the chlorine then gives that electron back to the oxygen. Let's clean that up. Now we can see that we've covalently bonded our chlorine to the nitrogen, but we've created a quaternary center and a resulting positive charge. In addition, we have the OH polyatomic anion that has a negative charge. Gosh, wouldn't it be nice to balance those charges? Well, turns out it's very easy to do. The oxygen comes over and grabs one of the hydrogens from the nitrogen. Hydrogen donates the electrons back to the nitrogen, and we are left with water and monochloramine. As the monochloramine is the principal reaction product of ammonia and bleach, this is the thing responsible for all the headaches, tingling, burning, symptoms, whatever, bad stuff when people accidentally mix those two together. We've just seen that the reaction between hypochlorous acid and ammonia happens best around a pH of 8. But what happens if we get too high or too low? Well, if our pH goes too high, let's say around 12 or so, we'll get too much deprotonation of that hypochlorous acid, and it won't be able to react with anything. On the flip side, if we go too low, let's say down to a pH of 3 or so, the hypochlorous acid will still be protonated, but we will also protonate the ammonia into its conjugate acid, ammonium. Here doesn't react. There doesn't react. We have to have the pH in this nice, happy middle ground in order to get this reaction to proceed and get that monochloramine. In practice, because ammonia is a weak base, we're probably going to be in that middle ground pH of 8 or 9 region for this reaction. For us to get outside of that, too high or too low, we're probably adding something else in there, and that of course complicates matters. Now let's take a look at the other potential, and not so potential because people on the internet don't understand chemistry, and that's why you come here. Products. How about dichloramine? Okay, it's monochloramine, but double. It doesn't take much to think that the reaction to get monochloramine would be pretty much the same as dichloramine, you're just tacking on another unit. My guess is all the hypochloride would want to react to monochloramine first before the dichloramine, and there's probably some electronic or steric or otherwise argument. This is plausible, but probably not likely. Next! 
Oh yeah! Nitrogen trichloride is a liquid explosive, so you know it's a good time! Also called trichloramine, you can take the same principle of dichloramine and apply it, but only more so. Which means to say the synthetic procedure to get nitrogen trichloride is probably a little more complicated than just mixing bleach and ammonia. That being said, it is an explosive, so I'm definitely going to bite on this one. You ever seen nitrogen triiodide, the purple explosive you can set off with a feather? Yeah, this is its little brother. Discovered in 1812 by French scientist Pierre-Louis Dulong, Dulong lost two fingers and an eyeball, but decided to keep working on it. Eventually, he passed the project along to Sir Humphrey Davy, who was also injured by nitrogen trichloride. While he was temporarily blinded, Davy hired a relatively unknown scientist to help him with the work. That scientist's name? Michael Faraday. Yeah, that Faraday. Little known fact, Faraday discovered benzene. None of this has anything to do with bleach or ammonia whatsoever, but it's my channel and I found it interesting. Uh, thank you. Next! What about chlorine gas? We can see the hypochlorous acid, which we know we get from the sodium hypochlorite bleach, can decompose into diatomic chlorine. And while chlorine gas is definitely not great for you to be breathing, this reaction probably isn't going to happen, and here's why. It needs acid to happen. Looking back at our example, we have bleach and ammonia. Ammonia is a base. We're probably going to scavenge any of these protons with the ammonia that we have, and that drives the reaction back to the left. Therefore, your chlorine isn't going to form. Much more likely, your hypochlorous acid is going to react with the ammonia and create monochloramine. Next! Hydrochloric acid. This one's probably my favorite. I found a source online that said you could take the hypochlorous acid and decompose it into an HCl and a single oxygen. No. How about hydrazine? Another worthy choice and an excellent liquid fuel for rockets. The problem with that whole rocket application is you probably need an oxidizer to go with that, so if you don't have it, it's not like you're going to immediately propel your mop bucket into orbit. If you go online, you'll almost certainly find this reaction set up here. We take our sodium hypochlorite bleach and our ammonia and we get our friend monochloramine plus sodium hydroxide. We then take the monochloramine and react it with an excess of ammonia and get hydrazine and hydrochloric acid. Well, geez, those look like two bad reagents, so what are we gonna do? Have no fear, pilgrim. Turns out our friends the internet chemists just pulled the olin roshig synthesis of hydrazine and only took the molecules. What they forgot were two big reaction conditions that we didn't look at here. The first is heat, talking like 130 C, and the second is increased pressure. So, unless you accidentally mix your bleach and your ammonia in your pressure cooker and accidentally close the lid and accidentally pressurize it and accidentally heat it on high heat for a while, you're probably not going to get hydrazine. Nice try, internet chemists! So close. Next! And that's the chemistry of ammonia and bleach. No BS, all science. See you next time. This is a chemical burn. It'll hurt more than you've ever been burned and you will have a scar.